fails, Daddy. <laughs> How y'all like that technology? Y'all look cool. Them earbuds in. How are y'all this afternoon? Good, good. It's good to see y'all today. How was your day? Awesome. Hey, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Um, man, I want to tell you. I want to. I want to tell you just how. You know, I always talk about how quick things can spin off <laughs> in the wrong direction. And let me tell you how my afternoon went. And now I want to take prayer requests. And uh, you, when you when you want to find out what's in your cup. <laughs> so, uh, I had an opportunity to, to work 11 hours today instead of 12 or 13, and I took it. And uh, so I left right after 4 o'clock, and I was pretty excited, and uh, stopped by uh, Walmart to, to find something, couldn't find it, called Callie, and she did, which was great. And uh, so then I uh, got home, and I'm, I'm pretty excited, you know. I got time to look over my notes. I got time to, you know, just to mess around, just relax. If you do, I have free time. I'm not in a rush. Get off at 545, run home, kiss my wife's ear for five minutes, grab my Bible, grab my boat, my notes, take off, get back in the truck and walk, and then pray that I catch every light green and no cops on the way. And today it wasn't like that. And I was pretty excited. And uh, April said, hey, you want to, she was cooking some will feed you before you go. I said, that'd be great. She said, uh, uh, we're going to get to eat today? She said, why, sure. Now, number one, that was a good thing today. And a uh, new recipe, and it was good. She said, you want to drain this grease, or do you want to feed Lennox, the, the, the ten month, eight-month-old, nine-month-old? She's not here to correct me, but she's less than one. And uh, week old, ten-week old. So anyway, we sat down with her, and I, at first I said, well, I don't know. I guess I'll drain the grease. I said, where's the, thing, where's the thing you want me to drain it into? She said, won't you just come feed the baby? I said, that'd probably be good. So I sat down with her, I'm feeding her, and here I am, got all this time. While I'm feeding her, I'm, uh, I think we were watching Puppy Dog Pals because Carson and Creed were there too. And uh, I'm feeding this baby, I'm watching Puppy Dog Pals, pukes all over me. <laughs> pukes all over herself, pukes all over me, and I'm concerned because I have her like this. So I grip her chubby little cheeks, and I'm flipping her this way, and I'm holding her. Two, number one, I don't want her to choke. Number two, I've about handled all the puke that I can handle, and I don't know if my pocket could hold anymore. So I got her, and uh, she finishes. I put her down. I caught, well, there went all my extra time. <laughs> so Landry's like, oh, man, puked all over. Mom, that was your fault. You should have been the one I... I don't know if she was blaming me. She was blaming her. But I said, you know what? That just gives me an opportunity to go ahead and take the time that I had to get me a shower because it done soaked through everything. And, uh, and it's one thing to smell maybe like horse manure, cow crap when you come in, but it's a whole nother to smell completely like baby vomit. There ain't no smell like any other. And I couldn't even stand myself. And uh, so I went, washed my watch, and then uh, any, long story short, you know, I had an opportunity at that moment, at that sp specific moment, doing a cool thing, enjoying time with my granddaughter, and it all went south. And uh, uh, Alabama sings a song when it all goes south. Man, it went south in a hurry. And you know, I didn't flip out. I didn't throw a fit. I didn't, you know, it was just one of them things. And if you want to know what's in your cup or you don't know what's in your cup, but you want to know what's in your cup, Get in a jam, a bind, or a pinch, and you'll find out real quick what's in your cup. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. That's probably more information that you wanted, but I wanted to share that. I've had an opportunity to see what's in my cup this week. Any prayer requests? Yes, sir. Wormy. I know a youth pastor named Wormy. All right. Uh, Y'all be praying for Wormy. She's got a, 
She's got fatty liver. We want to lift her up. And anybody else? Yes, sir. Who? Micah. Micah, okay. And she's got uh, lumps in her breast. She's going back to the doctor Monday. Okay. Uh, Micah, they found a lump, and she's going to go back for tests on Monday. You want to keep Micah Dudley in your prayers? Yes, sir. How's Gay in? Uh, Gay ends battling cancer. We want to continue to lift her up. I don't have an update on Cash. Uh, y'all, do you have one, Delia? Um, she's wanting you to actually keep her husband in prayer. Tyler. Tyler. For those of you who don't know, um, Tyler, uh, the O'Neill family, Tyler and Maria O'Neill, are uh, uh, their seven-year-old has had these seizures. It's a rare, rare thing. Um, it's, it's, unless the Lord intervenes, that's this, it's it. Um, probably maybe this week. And... Uh, uh, Maria's been there with her son the whole time. Tyler has not. And so he's probably struggling with some some, some guilt, tons of guilt. And just want to continue to lift up the O'Neill family, Maria and Tyler, mom and dad, and Connor, and uh, lift up Cash O'Neill. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sorry about that. I was looking over here for you. Ron and Regina Foster. Okay. Their granddaughter tested positive Friday and they were spending the day with her. So they're in a quarantine now. Yeah. Thank you for, thank you for bringing that up. Uh, so Ron Foster called me um, uh, probably Monday and told me that his, uh, you know, his granddaughter had been, uh, had, had been in, tested positive on Friday, they were with her on Thursday, contact tracing, you back up 48 hours. So I went through the contact tracing with him according to CDC, and it's within six feet for a period of 15 minutes. It doesn't matter mask or no mask. CDC says within six feet for 15 minutes. And were you on Sunday in church within six feet for 15 minutes? He said, no. He said, uh, we were not. Uh, and, you know, and so no one was named in contact tracing. There wasn't anybody to reach out to to let them know. Uh, so if you, if you hear, well, I heard that they, well, now you know. We went through the protocol, and they, nobody. So we asked them just to continue to quarantine for the full 14 days, and then we'll see them in about 10 more. But we want to continue. They're, as far as they know right now, they're negative. No symptoms, nothing. They just know that their, their granddaughter tested positive. Yes, sir. Good to see you back, Bob. I'd like to have a prayer set for my brother who lives down in Sleeman. Yes, sir. Uh, his name's Eddie. And he's a little bit older than me, but he is in really bad health. And his wife told me on the phone the other day that he is extremely sick. Okay. We sure will. Appreciate you. You betcha. We're going to lift up Eddie. Bob's brother's just been sick. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Maggie. Maggie. They said she's basically the surgery good. She's at home. And right now, she's like she's doing fine. Amen. Maggie was a little girl. Little four. Four? Foot, four years old? Four year old. Yep. She, her, she finally had an opportunity. Her foot's backwards. Whole thing. She had an opportunity. Shriner paid for the surgery. She, her mom requested prayer. They broke it, turned it around, and now she's recovering, doing great. And I uh, just want to continue to pray for that little girl. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. <laughs> Any 
And while I'm thinking about it, um, Pine Baptism is going to be this Sunday. Uh, it's going to be at Neil Young's house, uh, same, and it'll be, uh, it'll be potluck. So y'all whip up your best dish and bring it on. I don't, I'm looking forward to trying each and every one of them, especially that, that peach cobbler right out of that Dutch oven. Don't let me down, Dale. Don't, don't you slap that liner from that Dutch oven on my, on my plate again this year. It's two years in a row. Crust was good, though. At least I got some crust. Let's go to the Lord. <laughs> Father God, I praise you and I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that we have to come before you, Lord. Such a holy God, a holy God, creator of heaven and earth. <laughs> God, I just can't even imagine somebody like me, able, granted access to go right into the throne room of God, the God. God, I thank you. Jesus, thank you for making a way. Thank you for granting access. Thank you for taking our sins. Thank you for dying in our place. Thank you for taking the whipping, the, the scourging, everything that, we, everything that we should have took, you took. And you took all that judgment. Lord, thank you for being judged for our sins and, and, found, and found worthy. God, we praise you and we thank you for all you've done. We thank you for what you continue to do. Lord, we lift up every one of these to you and I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that that uh, we just lift up Wormy to you. And I thank you, Father, for, for complete restoration and healing in her life in the name of Jesus. And we lift up Miss Micah. And I thank you, Lord, for health and healing for her. God, I thank you that you can, we continue to lift up Miss Gay Ann. And I thank you, Lord, that, that uh, you continue to do a perfect work in her and bring her all the way to cancer-free. Lord, we lift up the O'Neill family. And I'm going to continue to pray for Cash until the day that, that he, he uh, outlives me. Or breathes his last. I'm going to continue to pray for him like I would for my kid. And I know, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. And what a testimony it would be, Lord, if you raise him up and heal him completely, totally, when the doctor says we can do no more and call in those uh, death agents to care, care, carry him through. God, I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you raise him up and heal him in Jesus' name. And, Father, I pray that you just be there right with Tyler. Draw close to him, Father. I pray, Lord, that you beat away old slick that's beating on him, that's uh, bringing all this condemnation, that's bringing all this guilt and all this shame and all these uh, feelings of resentment. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you beat them away. And I thank you, Lord, that grace and mercy and love and kindness and goodness, Lord, I pray that he feel he feel your fruit, Holy Spirit. He feel your fruit as you draw close to him. And it compels him. It compels him to draw close to you. God, I pray that you just give strength to Maria. You give strength to Connor. And I thank you for that extra measure of faith to believe. God, we lift up Ron and Regina. We lift up the granddaughter. And we thank and we praise you, Lord. COVID free in Jesus' name. God, we lift up Mr. Eddie to you. And Lord, we lift up Miss Maggie to you. And God, we pray health and healing for them in the name of Jesus. Father, for the men and fences team, I pray that you bring those who need it. You bring those who need it, God, from the north, south, east, and west that have hang-ups and just can't get past it. God, I pray that you bring them in because I know they're going to get fed the Word of God. They're going to get fed from a, from a tool chest of someone who's been there, done that, and, uh, and, and can tell them how to do it, can tell them who to do it through, who makes the biggest difference, and that's Jesus Christ. God, we praise you and we thank you for this service today. I thank you for the opportunity we have to worship you. I pray, Lord, that we take the opportunity that we have and that we draw closer to you in the time that we have. God, I just thank you for the word that you've given today. God, I just pray that you, uh, that you fill in the gaps, Lord. You fill in the gaps. And, uh, Lord, we love you. We thank you. We praise you for all you've done, all you're doing, all you plan to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Will you guys sing along with us as we worship? When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair When the saints of us shall gather over on the other shore And the roll is called up yonder I'll be there When the roll
heard it I think Pete sang it a few weeks ago but it just says a lot to me you know when uh, when you're going through stuff and maybe you just don't know what you can count on but you can count on the Lord and you just say yes I'm gonna get through this yes I will do whatever I have to do and yes I'll trust you even though things are not good
obedient and I choose to praise to glorify, glorify the name of all names. Nothing can stand against. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Oh yes, I will for all my days. Oh yes, I will all my days. Oh yes, I If you got your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Psalm 91. And I was seeking and praying, and, and uh, yesterday I kind of kind of thought, you know, maybe I wanted to camp out in Psalm 91 just a little bit longer and just see if I couldn't, uh, you know, dig a little something more out of that. I need to, I, you know, and I, I did feel like the I think it was Oak Ridge boys, you know, that dig a little deeper in the well, boys, and I felt like I just needed to dig a little bit deeper in the well, and and uh, I, I, I'm so glad I did because. Um, I started digging into this Psalm 91, and I, I really didn't get far into it. Matter of fact, um, I'll have some other scriptures, but I didn't, I didn't get past verse 1. I mean, <laughs> it was just, I started thinking and recollecting and just just soaking in what it was that, that God was doing. And I, I just want to encourage you um, to, I mean, I don't know. It was just one of those God things, this you know, this what's what's in your cup. And I, I really have been thinking about this and digging into to what exactly is in my cup. And, and maybe it's not even what's in your cup. Maybe it's what is missing from your cup. And maybe you got the right thing in your cup, but you don't have enough of it. I mean, you really need to think about it, it goes a lot more than just a good attitude, bad attitude. It goes It goes a lot further than that. It goes... You know, how much relationship do you have in your cup? How much Holy Spirit do you have in your cup? How much how much of God do you have in your cup? How much of the fruits of the Spirit uh, do you have in your cup? You know, you got two fruits, three, fr- three fruit, three fruits. How, how much fruits? <laughs> Bad English, but it's good preaching. How much? <laughs> uh, sorry, I apologize to all you teachers, all you educators who are out there. Um, I'll probably get a text from Bo later. You know you jacked all that up, don't you? So, but fruit, you know, think about that. Think about that. Is your cup a third full of what? Is it half full? I mean, how full is it? And uh, April and I came to the realization that we didn't have enough Jesus in our cup. And uh, we want more. I want a deeper walk. I want to go deeper in the things of God. And, and uh, uh, I, I was sharing with the Martins today. I said, you know, so, so much more then I want us, April and I, I, had, I, I went to Walmart. The thing I was looking for was some showbread because I wanted to take communion with my wife uh, and just to seek and to pray together and, and, and just to, to take communion with her uh, uh, today and, and maybe tomorrow and the next day. And who knows? I, I had, and I couldn't find it. And I called Callie and I said, where is the Israeli section in Walmart? She said, well, they don't have an Israeli section in the Longview Walmart. They do at the kill. I said, I'm not in Kilgore. She said, well, I'll call. It's good to have daughters who will just pick up the phone and do your work for you. And she said, let me just call around and see what I can find. So when she goes, you're going to need the juice too, aren't you? And I said, probably. She said, well, I'll take care of that. When I got home, there was a box of showbread. And, man, I, I tell you what, I, 
I don't know where that's going to lead. I don't know, but I know that it, you can't never go wrong when you're chasing down the path of Jesus Christ. When you're chasing down the path and reaching up from behind to touch that tassel, to touch the hem of the garment. And, the, and, and even a more awesome thing at that, and I want to get into it even, I don't want to get in, I don't want to get into the middle of the, of, of the heart of the message yet, but to think, to think <laughs> that the Holy Spirit pursued us, that Jesus pursued us when we were trying to get away from ourselves when we didn't even like who we were, the man that my wife told me, I hate you, and I gave her every reason to say it. That Jesus, that Jesus pursued you and won you. He sought you and he bought you with his redeeming blood. He loved you ere he knew him, ere he knew you, and all our love is due him. He plunged us to victory beneath the cleansing flow. Man, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> Do you have enough of Jesus in your cup? Do you have all you need? Is there anyone that can say, I got all the Jesus I need, brother? <laughs> I heard a preacher say one time, I think he was running about 200. He said, I got all the people I need right there. He said, because if I get any more, I'm going to be too busy. If I get any less, I'm not going to be busy enough. Well, I'm going to tell you, I'm not there. <laughs> I told, we agreed as a leadership group, we want all the Lord will send us, and we promise to feed those that he sends. We promise to feed them with the feed that he gives to feed. If it's two, if it's 2,000, whatever, whatever, God. I don't want to limit God and what he's doing. And we've seen him do amazing things from 30 to 60 to 80 sure. to the first Sunday we met together, 360, you know. And then we've seen him ebb and flow. It just, but when it comes down to, do we have all in this cup, in this cup that we call Trails In? If I wrote on this coffee cup, Trails In, T-E-C-C-H-C, -C -C, and it represented the church, do we have all that we need? In that cup? No. No. Man, we got a job to do. We got a job to do. You know, it's not always those that are in church that need church. There's a whole lot outside these walls that need them some Jesus too. I'm not saying you're not doing it. I, I'm not saying that at all. I'm just reminding that it's all of our responsibilities to fill the cup. <laughs> to be led by the Lord, to take advantage of opportunities that we have to share the Lord and invite somebody to church. And I get testimonies from you all the time about folks that, that, you know, opportunities you've had, not bragging, but sharing. Man, I got to invite this person. I was scared to death, but I did it anyway. Man, that's awesome. That's awesome. But when we internalize this and we look at our cup, our cup, I want to challenge you this week to continue looking into your cup and to see, is it, are there some things in there that don't need to be? Are there some things in your cup that, that you don't have enough of? Man, I, don't, I, I didn't put that scripture up there, but, but man, I love it. It says, you know, that a good man puts into the treasury of his heart good things, and an evil man puts into the treasury of his heart evil things, and the mouth will spew out whatever is it. And I got to thinking, the reason those good things were in that treasure chest, the reason those bad things were in that treasure chest is because they put those things in that treasure chest. Our cup didn't fill itself on its own. We put it in there. We chose to receive Jesus Christ as our Savior. He continues. He wants to fill our cup. He wants to fill our cup. And so many times in my life, I've gotten scared and said, Oh, I don't want that. It's too much. I don't want that. Well, that's too much, Lord. You, you gone too far now, Lord. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah, no. Nah, nah, let me pray about that, Lord. Let me pray about that, Jesus. I'll get back to you. And the Lord's saying, man, I want to add to your cup. I want you to seek that. I challenge you this week to seek the Lord and to see what's in your cup. Psalm 91.1 says, Those who live in the shelter of the Most High find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Man, I hung on that word shelter 
You know, when I heard that word shelter, and I was even thinking about it yesterday, that took me all the way back to Colorado City. It, how many even know where Sea City is? Anybody know where Colorado City, Texas is? <laughs> A lot of folks call it Colorado. It ain't Colorado, Colorado. It's Colorado City, Texas, and it's about 30 miles uh, east of Snyder. And, uh, and uh, Snyder was dry, Sea City was wet. <laughs> I spent a lot of time in Sea City, but I had to get that out of my cup. <laughs> Colorado City is where my grandpa, my granddaddy, and, and Grandma Linda, that's where they lived. And the awesome thing about that is, <laughs> Sea City, the awesome thing about that is they had a storm shelter. They had a storm shelter in their house. Man, shoot, we, we, <laughs> we didn't have no storm shelter in the mobile home we were growing up in when we were little. We were, we, we were old field trash. If you needed to get under the house, you did it two ways. You either climbed around through the pinning or you just lifted up the carpet in the living room and dropped through the floor that was it. I'll just be real. When we were poor, Jack, when we played, me and my sister was wrestling, you would call time out if you got close to that part. You know, them mobile homes where you got this little, you can't even call it an entertainment center. It's this little thing in your living room where you set your TV and there was those cushions on each side. If you lift the cushions up, you have some storage. It was like a houseboat. <laughs> you, lift those, you lift those cushions up, and there was some storage there. Well, over to that one, in the, there was a hole about under the carpet. Man, I still remember this. Day. Move on. I, I, sea City. So we went to my grandparents' house. We would go to Granddaddy and, and Grandma Linda's house. And, man, I would go straight to that shelter, and I would see if that, and it, see if that door was unlocked. And if it was, I would go down in there. And it was so cool. It got cooler the further you went down in. The further you went down into that shelter, it got cooler and cooler. You flipped. You couldn't see nothing. You flipped a light on. There was a light. It's where they put all their canned goods. But I remember just smelling in that smell of that musty shelter. It just wasn't nothing like it in the world when I... I think about that now. Matter of fact, it's been decades. I mean decades since I've been in that shelter. But I don't know if James has ever been in there, but at Laterno, they had a cooler. And it's, it's in Dome 2. And it's where we kept all the, all the supplies because it was like 123 in Laterno Domes. Don't think. Man, I wish I worked there. Oh, we <laughs> Anywho. And uh, so here we were. And uh, we didn't want these things to melt, so we would put them in the cooler. Man, there had to be some black mold off in there. I'm not sure. But I just know they had a window unit that was inside this building, inside this dome. You could go in the cooler, shut the door. I could turn the light off, and it was the exact same smell as my grandparents' shelter. Man, I would sit in there sometimes just standing there and just to smell that smell. In that shelter, I felt peace. In that shelter, I felt at peace. I felt secure in that shelter. I was cut off from the outside world in that shelter. It was a quiet place in that shelter. You think about that. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High. Have you been beat down by the world? Have you been beat down by situations and the economy and the things that you see? Have you been beat down by crazy kids? Or are you that crazy kid that's been beat down by your mom or your dad? Or have you been facing tough times, tough decisions? Have you been facing illnesses or sicknesses and it's consumed your mind and you need a safe place? I need to live in the shelter of the Most High. I want to encourage you to take, a, a, take those steps down into that shelter of the Most High God to stand there and to feel secure, to stand there in the shelter of the Almighty God, in the shelter of your Father, to stand there in that shelter, cut off from the outside world, to put on, I don't know if your thing is Bethel, I don't know if it's Elevation, I don't know if it's uh, 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 that, 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 the Gaithers, I don't know if, if what it is that you listen to that gets you in, in, into the presence of the Lord, but I encourage you to spend that time in the shelter of the Most High and to go there and to draw from Him peace, 
to draw from him security, to draw from him till he consumes your thoughts and your presence of your mind that all of the things of this world, like the song says, grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and power and praise. To spend time and tell him your needs. Tell him what you want. And then give him time to respond. You don't be like me. Lord, I pray for this, 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 and this. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. Amen. Whoop. And I jump up and walk out. And he's going, whoop, 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 whoop. sit there in just complete peace. Man, I tried that two weeks ago for the first time. I mean, to sit there in complete tranquility, peace with that worship going. I was on my face. It was a chair right there at my desk. I turned it around. And I was just on my face before the Lord, and I was just seeking. And, and I'm going to tell you, it was so peaceful. I didn't want to move. I didn't want to move. And I fell asleep right there and woke up. <laughs> and when I woke up, I was, whew, man, I don't know if I could have handled it anymore, but I sure wanted to find out. <laughs> Time spent with your father is never time wasted. Time spent in the shelter of the Most High is never time wasted. Man, how much time for the Lord is in our cup? King James Version says it this way. He that dwells in the secret place, secret place. Man, I'm going to tell you what. If we were playing hide and go seek and that door was unlocked, guess where I was going? <laughs> they were skidding. I flipped the light off too. Shoot, my sister and cousins weren't finna go down there if the light was off. Forget that. John MacArthur says, the secret place of the Most High is an intimate place of divine protection, which is a fancy way of saying what I just told you all ago. It's an intimate place of divine protection. The use of Most High for God emphasizes that no threat, no threat can ever overpower him. No threat can ever overpower the Most High God. Psalms 32, 7 says, For you are my hiding place. You protect me from trouble. You surround me with songs of victory. Man, I want to hear. I know someday we are going to stand. We are going to be standing on streets of gold. We're going to be standing on the, on the land, on the Beulah land that we sing about. We're going to be standing. We're going to see for ourselves what a gate made of one single pearl looks like. And we're going to be standing there, and we're going to get to hear the sound of our Father, the sound of our Savior singing over us. We're going to be singing the sounds of the Holy Spirit singing over us. How awesome is that going to be? Man, I love that. For you are my hiding place. You, Jesus, you, God, you are my hiding place. You protect me from trouble. You surround me with songs of victory. You say, man, I want that. I want that. I want to live in the shelter of the Most High. Man, I put down here a question. How do we live in the shelter of the Most High? We said it uh, Sunday. To live in the shelter of the Most High is to live in Jesus. To live in the shelter of the Most High is to live in Jesus. Remember, and here's the cool thing that I, that, that I was praying about or thinking about earlier when I started off speaking. The most awesome thing about this is this. Jesus said in John 14, 20, when I am raised to life again, when I am raised to life again, you will know that I am in my Father. And here's the cool part. You are in me. I am in my Father. And you are in me. And I am in you. We are in Jesus. You think about that. Man, I can tell you right now. Me and my cup of whatever my cup is full of is in Jesus, is in Jesus. <laughs> and Jesus is in us. When I said to live in the shelter of the Most High is to live in Jesus, 
That wasn't, that wasn't a twist. He says that Jesus is in the Father. Jesus is in the Father. And we are in Jesus. He is the shelter of the Most High. And he is also in us. Jesus is our shelter. Jesus is our hiding place. Jesus is our secret place. The second thing, number one, to live in Jesus, to live in the shelter of the Most High is to live in Jesus. The second thing is we have to be obeying his word. If we want to live in the shelter of the Most High, we have got to be obeying his word. Uh, 1 John 3, 24 says, Now he who keeps his commandments abides in him. I gave you the wrong. Oh, I'm sorry. 1 John. 1 John. I'll read it. 1 John 3, 24. Now he who keeps his commandments. What are, what are God's commandments? Where can we find those? On tablets of stone and there's 10 of them? Where else? Yeah, man, I'm going to tell you, there's always a song in my head. You know what just popped up in my head? The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. What's the rest of it? Oh, yeah, Stand Alone on the Word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. You know the top two songs in, well, I won't go to the top one, but the, one of the other top songs in my head is stuck in there from the very beginning. <laughs> Father Abraham had many sons. All right, we're going to move on. But those things, you know, that we teach our kids and we train them up when it says to train them, we're teaching and training our kids to get their cup full of Jesus. And it's these songs that we sing, the B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. Man, you let them get that in their heart and in their mind and going back to the Word, help them read the Word, read the Word to them until they could read the Word for themselves. And then by living the Word, not just reading the Word, but by living the Word, and helping them to live the word. Now we're teaching them to not just read the word, but to actually do the word. This isn't just a, a good story that we tell. These are words to live by. Man, I've not mastered that. They are not near good enough. But I'm going to tell you what. It don't mean I give up and quit. I may not be all that, that, that God wants me to be or called me to be. But one thing I do, I forget the man that I was. And I keep pressing forward to the high calling. Of, of God in Christ Jesus. I'm not who I used to be. I refuse to be that man. What I do is this. What I try to do is this. What I read is this. What I want in my cup is this. And do I have enough of this? Not near enough. Not near enough. But I'm not giving up. I'm going to continue. And I'm going to keep on. And I'm going to keep on. I'm going to keep on keeping on. John 1, 3, 24 says, Now he who keeps his commandments, he, that could be in, any one of us, he, she, it, we, you, they. <laughs> Did I get that one right? You educators? How about that? We, he, now he who keeps his commandments abides in him. Who is him? God. Yeah, God, Jesus, you betcha. He who keeps his commandments abides in him. Mm. And he, Jesus, in him, which is us. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us. Amen. That's the seal. That's the seal. When Holy Spirit raised Jesus Christ from the dead, God said, all right, it's done. I've accepted his offering. I've accepted his offering. Everything that he did, all the punishment that he took, he fulfilled every, every prophecy, all complete, except for one, one more, one more. And when God said, I accept it, he, it says that Christ offered himself once and for all as the sacrifice. Here it is, Father. Here I am. I've done everything that you've asked me to do. I've done it all. And he offered it to him, and God found it acceptable, and the Holy Spirit raised him from the dead. The Holy Spirit raised him from the dead. And that Holy Spirit, we receive that seal that we have that promise in heaven. That seal that the name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Abides in him Jesus, and he Jesus in him us. And by this we know that he abides in us by the Spirit whom he has given us. To keep him, to keep him. So you know where I'm going next. 
To keep the commandments, we have to first do what? Starts with an R. Ends in um. Read them. <laughs> yeah. We got to read them. That's a word, isn't it? R-E-A-D apostrophe E-M. Yep. Read them. <laughs> it is in Texas. To keep them, we've got to read them. Let's look at Joshua 1.8. It says, study this book of instructions. How often? Continually. Continually. And do what? Meditate on it. How often? Day and night. So we'll be what? Sure to obey everything written in it. Man, you think it cannot be that easy. It really is. It really is. But you know what I get bound up with? Distractions distractions that I say take so much of my time. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You know, it just came back to my remembrance. Boy, I'm talking. I'm going way back there now. Jason Taylor was preaching a message one time because people kept saying, well, I ain't got time. I ain't got time. I ain't got time. I ain't got time. I ain't got time to read. I ain't got time. And Jason put a toilet on the stage. And his wife said, Christy said, Jay, if you sit that toilet, I will get up and walk straight out of this church. Do you understand? And I'm sure he went. <laughs> he kept saying, I hear all the time, I ain't got time. I ain't got time to read. I ain't got time. I just ain't got time. He looked, grabbed his Bible, ain't got time. Stepped over the top, looked at Christy, and went, Ooh, you got time for this? If y'all were there, y'all remember that? <laughs> you know, we make time for the things that we really want to do. We make time for the things that we really want to do. Can we make a little time to put some word in? Study the word continually. Meditate on it day and night. It doesn't say that you got to read, read, read day and night. It doesn't. We are to meditate on We're to read continually, and we're to meditate on it. To meditate means I'm thinking about that day and night. I am churning on that word. I am getting nourishment and more and more. You know, every time a cow calls up his cud and chews on it, he breaks it down more and more, swallows it, pulls it back up, and chews on it, and gets more and more out of it. That same thing. Every time we recall that word, we get more and more of it. Keep calling it up day and night so we'll be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all, all you do. Oh, man. You want to, and, and I, it's not so that you will obey everything written in it, but when we meditate, when we read that book continually, we meditate on it day and night, we're doing our best to obey everything written in it, we will be prosper and succeed in all that we do. After reading them, what's next? So if we're going to read it, what's the next thing? We got to, starts with a D, ends in um. We got to do them. If you're going to read them, you got to do them. You got to do them. Let's look at James 1, 22 through 24. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourselves. Oh, man. Uh, Chris, man, that testimony uh, uh, that he gave Wednesday, uh, is, he, I forgot to send the production team the title, but it's, it was called Check the Box. You know, I get in there and I read. I'm going to read. I'm going to read real quick. It's good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to the Most High. It's good to proclaim your unfailing love in the morning, your faithfulness in the evening, accompanied by a harp and a lute and harmony in the lyre. And you thrill me, Lord, and with all I've done for you, I sing joy because of what you have done. Check. Done. I read it. What'd you read? Uh, pretty sure it was an Old Testament. Could you meditate on it? I remember the word Lear. <laughs> but when we study that word, we meditate on it, and then we become a doer. When we read it and look at it and gaze into it and put ourselves into the story, we put ourselves into the word. And we're, 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 we're meditating on it. 
You must do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourselves. If you are listening to it but not doing it, you are fooling yourselves. But if you listen to the word, I like that. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it's like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, walk away, and then forget what you look like. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Back to Psalm 91.1. Finally, verse 1 says, you'll find rest. You'll find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This, uh, when I thought of that word shadow, I thought of shade. And since my mind frame was already back in Colorado City, Texas, Man, you know, this time of year in West Texas, there is, even in the hot summer, they don't have humidity. Humidity is extremely low, if at all. It's very low, even if there is some. But you can get in the shade of a tree, man, in West Texas, and you could be cool. You could be cool. I got to thinking about that. You know, my, my poopaw, it, it was supposed to be pawpaw. It came out poopaw. They laughed. Family laughed. It stuck. He was poopaw for the rest of his life. He was the first, he was the first representative look at God that I had. I was a little kid, uh, me and my mom, uh, broken marriage, spent a lot of time with them. And then even after that, even after uh, she married my dad and he adopted me, um, I spent every summer, uh, every summer in Monaghan, Texas, with, uh, with my poopaw and my moomaw. It was supposed to be meemaw, came out moomaw, family laughed, it stuck. And, you know, but he was the first representative look at God that I saw. And godly man, every evening he would sit. Y'all remember those old metal lawn chairs that were stiff, came like that, but you could kind of rock in them a little bit? It wasn't really a rocking chair, but they had enough spring in there that you could, that's what he had under the tree. And y'all remember those stakes that you stick in the ground that spiraled up and made a little cup holder? And me and, my, me and my sister and cousins, if you yanked them out of the ground, you could stick your hand in that cup holder and you could sword fight and stick the crap out of each other with this metal thing. Well, after he whooped our butts for that, uh, it became a cup holder again. But I remember that we would sit in the shade for hours in the afternoon, and I thought it was the dumbest thing to sit in the shade and just watch the sun go down, rocking that chair, Dream about stabbing my sister with that cup holder. <laughs> Drink a sweet tea. And I thought, this is dumb. It's kind of like Paisley when we took her walking in the field. We said, isn't this fun? She said, this is not fun. This is just walking. It was kind of like that. <laughs> but do you know now, I love the opportunity to sit in the backyard in the shade of the Catawba tree, drink coffee in the cool of that evening, Think about my Lord and the things that he's done for me. Meditate on his word. Read his word. Listen to his word. Or just enjoy the nature that he created. <laughs> Until the sun goes down. Now I understand what it means to rest in the shade of the Almighty. If we're not close to God, you can't rest in his shadow. But when you're close to him, when you are in the shelter of Jesus Christ, in the shelter of the Most High, then you are close enough to rest in the shade, the shade tree, the shade of God Almighty. Let's look at Hebrews 4, 1 through 3, and I'll be done. God's promise of entering his rest still stands, Trails in Cowboy Church, Harrison County. God's promise of entering his rest still stands. So we ought to tremble with fear that some of us might fail to experience it. Can you imagine what it would be like if we go through our whole lives and never experience what it is to rest in the shadow of the Almighty? To be so spooled up, so, so spooled up chasing whatever it is that we're chasing. Boss at work says, chasing that rat tail. Chasing that, chasing that rat, chasing that tail, chasing that dollar, chasing that dream, chasing that something, chasing that, chasing this, chasing, but to never, 
getting so full and occupy our cup so full of time that we don't have time for anything godly, anything of Jesus, anything of value. God's promise of entering his rest still stands. So we ought to tremble with fear that some of you might fail to experience it. For this good news, the good news is the gospel. The gospel of who? Jesus Christ. For this good news that God has prepared this rest. Who is that rest in? God, pre- God, God has prepared this rest is in him. It's in Jesus the gospel, the good news, the mystery that, that was revealed is that, that salvation is for the Gentiles too. That good news, that gospel, it's through who? Jesus Christ. For this good news, the gospel of Jesus, that God has prepared his rest, this rest, that rest is in Jesus, has been announced to us. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. And if we were to ask Jesus, if we were to say, Jesus, Jesus, my Lord, my Savior, my brother, Jesus, it's all about you. You know what Jesus would say? No. It's all about the Father. (laughs) It's all about the Father. Let's pray. Father God, I praise you and I thank you for the opportunity we've had, Lord, to gather in your name. Lord, to break this bread of life, to open it up. And God, I thank you for for revealing it to us. I thank you, Lord, for, Lord, I want to thank you. There were some good memories that you blessed me with while I was studying for this message. God, I pray, Lord, that you challenge us this week to examine what's in our cup that we don't want, don't need, what's in our cup, Lord, that we don't have enough of. And God, I pray that you give us the courage and the grace to make a change. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We thank you. Thank you for hearing these requests. Lord, I pray you bless those that are here. Bless those that will be uh, listening to the message, the, uh, the seed of the gospel of this message later. Lord, I pray that you bless us. We thank you for all you've done and continue to do. Thank you for not leaving us where you found us or the shape you found us in. In Jesus' name, amen.